Hello everyone, I'm just stopping by to let you all know that we have a brand new channel launched called What Culture Horror, which is the home of all things freaky, like lists, news, podcasts, all with a lovely horror tinge to them. It is pretty great, it's very spooky, so I'm, you know, not doing some big it up or anything, but you should definitely check it out, it is pretty dang good. I'm gonna head back there right now, hope you enjoy your list, hope you enjoy your video, and I'll see you again soon, bye! genre is in the business of making people squirm. And while violence is an easy way for these movies to cross the threshold of what we're comfortable with, horror continually challenges viewers in other ways too. Whether it's through sinister implication, behind the scenes pressure, or through approaching themes that are too reprehensible to really touch on screen, many films have famously flown too close to the sun and felt the burn of criticism at the way they have handled their horror. A fair few managed to work this to their advantage, but mostly we're just faced with films that don't know when to stop. Take a lesson from MC Hammer, guys. And before all you very hard and tough folk in the comments complain that these aren't gross enough choices, I have tried to craft a list that doesn't rely on endurance test movies like a Serbian film or The Human Centipede, but rather look at the spectrum of what too far can mean across the board. Plus, we can't have really gnarly ones because YouTube doesn't like it. Bear with me here. I am the R-rated cut of Ash from What Culture, and these are 10 horror movies that went too far. 9. Incident in a Ghost Land Pascal Logier is no stranger to pushing things too far. He is no stranger to this list either, with his far more well-known movie Martyrs making an appearance later on. But for now, we're here to discuss Incident in a Ghostland. The movie has a great twist, but it's one built upon the abuse of young women all the way through, reveling in making his characters victims more than anything else. However, that is not even the main issue, as the way Logier presents his villains is sickly, to say the least. Giving us an androgynous ringleader implied to be a man dressed as a woman, and a larger man who is defined as slow and brutish, Logier's approach to narrative isn't strong enough to support what comes across as problematic ideals. It's demonising minorities rather than utilising the characters in an inventive and rounded way, and we're faced with stereotypes and othering that just feels unnecessary. That one of the lead actresses cut her face open in unsafe work conditions and has been left with a disfiguring scar is just another reason why this film went way too far in capturing a substandard idea. 8. The Shining Whilst everything we see in The Shining is a meticulously rendered example of Stanley Kubrick's insane talent, he definitely went too far in trying to attain his artistic vision behind the scenes on this one. Of course, Shelley Duvall's treatment during filming has been no secret, and became a legend in its own right. Kubrick continually bullied and belittled Duvall throughout the whole 13-month filmmaking extravaganza, telling crew not to sympathise with her and consistently coming down hard on her acting abilities, essentially telling her she was worthless and wasting everyone's time. Infamously, he made her shoot the baseball bat scene 127 times in a row, meaning her mental anguish that is captured on film is very, very real from Kubrick's relentless provocation. At the end of the day, Kubrick hired an actor who is capable of acting and should have felt no desire to traumatise her into compliance to get what he deemed the right level of hysteria. Considering Duval's disappearance and strange behaviour in the years since, too, it really was a case of too high a cost. 7. Fire in the Sky now, this is not necessarily one that went too far by any normal horror movie standard, especially since the actual horror of the movie comes in one distilled moment and is arguably one of the most effective alien stories put to screen. But considering the context of the rest of the movie, holy sh**. They really didn't have to do us like that. Fire in the Sky is the tightly wound drama that sees a group of men attempt to convince the world that their friend was abducted by aliens. Whilst no one believes them and believes missing logger Walton could have been murdered, they are forced to reevaluate when Walton reappears five days later. And then we get a flashback to his experiences. Not leaving anything to the imagination, Fire in the Sky shows strange, fleshy abominations of an alien species that cover Walton in an elastic substance and then painfully probe his throat. Pinning his jaw and eyes open for extra effect. You may have seen worse, but this is certainly one of the most memorable horror scenes out there for its construction of terror, and comes completely out of nowhere in a film that posits itself as slow burning and ambiguous. Contextually, it is way too far for what is largely a drama. 6. The Girl Next Door 
where genre fans might praise horror for pushing boundaries and relish in the medium's ability to challenge its audience with difficult ideas and scenes, The Girl Next Door is one of the few movies that makes watchers recoil. Whilst its setup doesn't seem too far out of the realms of normality for horror, that of a suburban nightmare that sees two girls put into the custody of their abusive aunt, it is knowing that it's based on a true story and what the film doesn't shy away from that serves as a big line crossed. Seen through the eyes of a regretful David who flashes back to a case when he couldn't save a victim, we watch as Meg is tortured by our guardian with increasing brutality. It culminates with a scene that involves a blowtorch that will have any audience member crossing their legs, and one entirely unnecessary to be put to screen. The book that the tragic real-life case is based on actually chooses to be more suggestive in this moment, but what we get is an absolutely horrifying scene forced into life, to say the very least. Reality is always the most terrifying of all, as the girl next door proves. 5. Misery much in the same way as Fire in the Sky, Misery is a movie that takes a slow-burning, psychological drama tinged at the edges with a smattering of horror and opens the floodgates on it with one gnarly scene. The film infamous for its nail-biting depiction of Paul Sheldon's hobbling at the hands of obsessed fan Annie Wilkes. The Stephen King adaptation follows the book's tone faithfully enough, setting up the narrative that sees Sheldon in a car crash before being rescued and nursed back to health by Annie, only to learn she knows far more about him and his career as an author than any the average reader would. Her slow decline into mania as she attempts to keep him in her house and write a story that suits her preferences is captivating watching, right up until Paul gets a sledgehammer taken to his ankles to stop him from escaping his bed come prison. It is an expertly crafted scene that comes at just the right moment, transforming the film from standard spooky fare into full-blown body horror with two fell swoops. 4. Megan is Missing Megan is Missing frames its central young girls in a found footage, realistic manner, and since the film isn't necessarily any good, it only makes the themes that it toys with all the more repugnant. Megan is Missing tells the story of the titular girl that meets up with a predator from an online chat room and subsequently disappears, with little evidence leading the police to dropping her case. Her friend then picks it up in their place, resulting in meeting up with the guy that eventually is proven to have taken her, ending with one of the most queasy sequences to be envisioned and put to screen. Protagonist Amy is revealed to have been kept and tortured, before being offered the chance to escape if she gets into a barrel. In the barrel, as it turns out, is Megan's rotting corpse, of which Amy is then forced in with before the evil bastard takes her out to the forest and buries her alive and leaves her to die in the claustrophobic hell. If any film is going to leave you with that unshakably disgusted feeling, it's this one. 3. Peeping Tom Released in 1960 and technically the first iteration of the slasher movie, coming even before the enormous genre spark of Psycho later in the same year, Peeping Tom isn't a film that will have you reaching for a blanket to hide behind in comparison to modern horror movies. In fact, its tight narrative and impressive construction are more compelling reason to watch than not. But the world was not ready for this type of movie without someone like Hitchcock able to stand and weather the criticism. Director Michael Powell was told that he went too far by the world, who shunned Peeping Tom and savaged his filmmaking career to the point where his reputation was in ruins, and he struggled making movies ever since. Critics were repelled by Peeping Tom's voyeuristic nature, in which a serial killer murders women whilst recording their dying moments on his camera. So much were they disgusted by its content that it was hyperbolically described as so in the Tribune. The only really satisfactory way to dispose of Peeping Tom would be to shovel it up and flush it swiftly down the nearest sewer. Even then, the stench would remain. According to the world at the time, he went way over the line. 2. Brain Dead Embracing its boundary-pushing nature and scuzzy quality, Brain Dead, or Dead Alive to Americans, manages to go too far in completely the opposite direction, taking control of crazy narrative and exploiting it in excellent, way over the top fashion. Its ridiculous spiral into mayhem and disregard for anything other than campy gore makes Brain Dead the cult gem that it is. Seeing a ludicrous amount of blood spilled as it crosses the line, man doesn't look back at it again for a good hour and 45 minutes. The story sees mother's boy Lionel attempt to keep a zombie infestation locked up in his basement, when his mother is accidentally bitten by a Sumatran rat monkey and begins spreading her infection. As more and more people are sucked into the bloody mess, the film falls further off the rails, with highlights including a certain crazed zombie baby and a lawnmower being taken to a house full of party guests. The film is disgusting, reveling in its obscene practical effects and spreading as much blood as humanly possible in the process. Hell yes, it goes too far, but it wouldn't be half the film it is if it didn't. One. Martyrs. 
I have spoken about this movie a lot before, but it does deserve its place here too. Returning to Pascal Logier to shine a far more flattering light on his work, Martyrs is another of his movies that takes many steps outside of the average person's comfort zone, reveling in brutality to a degree that will stay with you long after watching. Where it might be easy to condemn movies for going too far when it comes to gore, there's an unspoken agreement between horror filmmakers and captive horror audiences that allows violence to be let off as part and parcel of the genre. It's to be expected, after all. Martyrs, like many exploitation movies, takes this agreement and runs it so far into the ground it hits the core of the planet, definitely going too far in its exploration of how much pain a human body can really take. But whilst this whole experience feels like it pushes comfortable viewing to its limits, Logier does something incredible by fixating the narrative around an experimental group that gives purpose to suffering and makes every brutal stroke of pain on screen actually mean something. It is hard watching, but a rewarding, grotty piece of cinema for it in the process. And that's our list. What other horrible movies belong on this list? And which work the line to their advantage? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always remember Fire in the Sky seems like a good movie night choice until you get to the alien scene. It is not worth the nightmares. Thanks for watching.